and welcome. We are delighted that our keynote speaker has arrived early this evening, so we are going to seize the moment and innovate with our program. It is my honor to introduce a woman who needs no introduction. She is a household name here in the US, but equally so across Ukraine. She is a visionary and a fighter who champions many causes, among them women, and the democratic world's keystone principles and values, especially in connection with Ukraine's fight for freedom. In fact, she bravely visited Kiev in April 2022, just two months into the war, where President Zelensky awarded her the Order of Princess Olga for her significant personal contribution to strengthening US ties to Ukraine. We are deeply thankful to you for your principled stand and your tireless commitment to freedom-loving people everywhere, and especially to Ukraine's aspirations for freedom in its own war for independence. Speaker Merida Nancy Pelosi, welcome. for your very kind words of welcome, for the invitation to be here, and thank you uh, for your great leadership as well. Uh, it's wonderful to be here under the auspices of Sweden, and we thank uh, Ingrid for the hospitality extended to us all, and wish Sweden well in its entry into NATO, which we hope will be eminent. today a, a large uh, delegation from the EU, largely women, and they were there to plead the case uh, for women, women in Ukraine. And uh, one of the gentlemen was there, the chairman of that delegation. I said, how did they let you in? But they did. <laughs> he said, all I know is one thing. Don't get in the way of the women when they have a goal. And our goal is to support the women in Ukraine. Madam Ambassador, you have been such a force in all of this. With your knowledge, your courage, the respect you command in Ukraine and its leadership, from its leadership, and the respect you command on both sides of the aisle, both sides of the Capitol, and down Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, Madam Ambassador, has, Mark Karova has been a source of strength, inspiration, and uh, friendship to so many of us. Thank you, my dear. And again, so many people to acknowledge here. I look at uh, Jody and several and, and Olga's panel with Sabrina uh, presiding. There's a lot of information to be exchanged, enthusiasms to be shared. When I visited Ukraine, I came home convinced, of course, that there was nothing to match or surpass the bravery of the people of Ukraine fighting for democracy, their democracy and therefore democracy writ large. What was awful, though, was the, the uh, toll that was taking on women, even then, two month and a half or two months into the, into the fight. Women were being raped in front of their children or in front of their parents. Children were being kidnapped in large numbers, some of those children not even knowing their names, their infants being taken to parts of Russia that are closer to Alaska than to Ukraine. Sins, crimes against humanity for which Russia must pay. Munich for the Munich uh, Security Conference just a couple of weeks ago, our vice president as President Harris made that point very strongly uh, to all who were gathered there. The President then made his speech uh, at a State of the Union and emphasized that as well. Justice must be done. Because the reconstruction is not just the physical re reconstruction, which is important, but it is a reconstruction in the lives of people. How can we make it up to families who have suffered so much? Justice must be done. And women are playing such an important role. Uh, last year we were honored to have First Lady of Ukraine come, and it was interesting because she had these 
slides of what was happening to the children, slides of what terrible what was happening to families and children. And she took us down this path and she had us all in her grasp and then said, we need weapons. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, some, we need weapons, and, and we, by then we, she owned us when we saw what was happening to the children. Uh, this, um, so when the Women's Foreign Policy Group and the Nobel Women's Initiative and United for Ukraine, Ukraine come together, there's a synergy. There is an energy, there is a, it is a force. There is a force. And constantly we're getting visitors from Ukraine. Uh, next week we will have Hana will come. Some of the people that I met when we were on the street, what, 10 years ago, nine years ago, who were fighting for freedom or to hold freedom at the time uh, during the Orange, you know, after the Orange Revolution. Well, they came last year and they brought a flag signed by the volunteers that, that came, or they were, when I say volunteers, the protesters on the street. Then I brought that flag to Kiev and the president signed the flag. So I said, Mr. President, we have all these signatures and things on here. I think they're complimentary. What do they say? <laughs> we had no idea. because we, And he then signed it very nicely. And then the president brought us to the Congress of the United States, a flag directly from the battlefield. He was there, what, 24 hours before? He brought us a flag from the soldiers in the battlefield and said, bring this to Congress, and that is the flag that, of course, has preeminence for us in the Capitol now. A symbol, a symbol of democracy, a symbol of courage, a symbol of suffering that we must address. So what do we want to do? We must win. We must win, right? You, we must win. We would like for that to happen as soon as possible. So when we were there the first time, the president said we need humanitarian assistance, both for those who are in another country, in Poland largely, but other countries, the displaced people within Ukraine, those in their homes but in battle areas. So there are different kinds of humanitarian assistant that was, assistance that was needed. But then, we need economic assistance to continue to teach the children, pay the soldiers, do all of those things. We need the military support, in which he has been very specific, and we are standing right there with him. And then, of course, the sanctions. The unity of the EU, the United States, and even Japan, other places on the sanctions is really remarkable. And as time goes by, even more detrimental uh, to the Russians. Detrimental to the Russians. So I said to someone who knows a great deal about the Russians, isn't it sad what this war is doing to the Russian soldiers? They're turned into brutes. They're raping people. They're killing people. They're stealing people. They've turned into brutes. And I was told by this person who knows the Russians well, the Russian soldiers don't do anything they are not ordered to do. So if the Russian leader thinks that he's going to demoralize the people of Ukraine by these atrocities, he has certainly failed at that. And that's why what we want to have is not only sanctions, as you say, economic sanctions, these sanctions, those, the, the seize, the SS, seize, freeze, and then thaw out to use the money Russian money to rebuild the infrastructure of Ukraine in a new entrepreneurial way going into the future. But we want a bigger, bigger sanction that just doesn't sanction a soldier for, as we should sanction them for their crimes against um, mate of humanity, but to hold the leadership of Russia accountable by trying to have a, a sanction, a resolution, naming Russia and its leadership as reckless aggressors, so that after all is said and done, that top tier are responsible for everything. So when justice is done, it will be from top to bottom. So it is something that we 
how do we ever think we would see in our lifetime that in this day and age with so much transparency and so much visibility that a, the Russian leadership would once again violate the sovereignty of Ukraine, go in using force, thinking that in, in three days he was going to be victoriously in Kiev. I loved when President, why well, are we proud of President Biden going to Ukraine? It was so wonderful. And then, and then he said, Putin thought he was going to be here three days after the invasion, and now it's one year later, and I'm here, President Biden and Kiev. <laughs> It was so, so, and I'll just close and say this to you because I say, and I, I, I just am so proud of it. When I was a student, Don F. Kennedy was inaugurated and I was there. And he said, as you all know, the student people of the world, that's not what your country, excuse me, do, citizens of America, ask not what America can do for you, but what we, you can do for your country. The next sentence is what affected me my whole life. The citizens of the world ask not what America can do for you, but what we can do working together for the freedom of mankind. And that is exactly what Joe Biden, President Biden did in this instance. Anyone who in EU, NATO, Ukraine, of course, and all, uh, was saying that um, he didn't go there with us saying this is how we think we should do it, was working together. No condescension, only collaboration and cooperation, listening, learning, working together on what and how and when. Together, working together for the freedom of mankind. I thought it was very Kennedy-esque of him, but I think it's probably Biden-esque by now. <laughs> he made his own mark and we're very proud of him. I just want to close, did I say that already? By one more thing. <laughs> Last week I had the honor of a visit from the First Lady of Poland. Uh, she came strictly to talk about Ukraine. And I thanked her for her, uh, the honor of her presence and to hear what she had to say. And what she said was, of course, Poland has been very um, receptive to so many people. You, you all know that, but let's salute them for that. And. Then she said, I said, what can we do additionally? And she said, what, we, what I need America to do and other countries to do is to understand that in Ukraine, there's a big need for trained health, mental health care workers to address the trauma that women have suffered and the people and families have suffered. So it was very specific, mental health, behavior, all of that. And that was the request that she had made. So when you listen, you learn. And we have that now as part of our agenda, reinforced by, of course, the distinguished ambassador. But I thank all of you for the attention you are paying to this. I think in America, the support for it is certainly bipartisan, bicameral, certainly among the women in the Congress, just about universal, right, Madam Ambassador? It's about universal, maybe, maybe one, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe one member of the Putin caucus, I don't know. <laughs> but in any event, but in any event, we will not stop until victory is won and justice is done. Thank you all for the opportunity.